I'm no Muslim, but I say this with the most up respect. Ashadu Allah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. Hold down, man. Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, everybody? Y'all already know, man. K for All TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. I want to tell everybody, welcome back to the channel. If any Muslims happen to be watching this video, I want to say assalamu alaikum. Y'all sit back and enjoy this video. For this one here, I'm going to be telling y'all from the experience of me going through Florida prison, I'm going to be speaking on the Muslims, how they are, how they carried their self, you know, things that I seen went down with them. And just, I'm going to touch on the Muslim thing all around the board. A lot of people been hitting me up, want me to drop this video. So I said, you know what? The hell with it, mine as well. Okay, now, I want to say it straight up. First quarter, no disrespect whatsoever to any Muslims out there and none of that. I never met a Muslim that I wasn't cool with. You understand? I never came across someone who was Muslim that we got into it or we didn't see eye to eye, any of that. Any Muslim I've met in person while I was locked up in the state of Florida was cool peoples, you understand? And, um, you know, they carried herself a little different. You know, of course, you know, they got to do their prayers every day, which is called salats. You know, salats, they got to, you know, they put their rug down and they, they, they do their little prayers and stuff like that. And, you know, to me personally, they carry their self and they do their time a way that a lot of other people should be doing their time. You know, all the bullshit that goes on inside of prison and all the conflicts and violence and unnecessary shit that happens, a lot of that shit can be avoided, you know, with doing your time the same way Muslims do theirs. When I was locked up at Charlotte CI, I was in Edom, and I had a homeboy named Charlie. You feel me? Free Charlie. He's still in there right now. He's got a life sentence. But... My homeboy, Charlie, you know, he was young and he was a Muslim. So he gave me, you know, the rundown. I used to see him do his salats every day. I used to see him, you know, fasting when it was time for them to, you know, do whatever he had to do when it came to that. And I actually spent time talking to him a lot about it. So he broke it down to me. You know, he, he, as much as I could take in his, his learning in such a short, short period of time, I did, you know. I believe he was like called a pearl white Muslim or something like that. And he told me the difference between good Muslims and bad Muslims. He said, good Muslims were the Muslims that, you know, are the ones that I come across while I'm in prison. You feel me? Bad Muslims are like ISIS, you know, the, the people that, you know, attacked the United States. Y'all know who those were. They killed a couple Americans, you know, one happened to be a Floridian from Miami. If y'all remember that a few years ago, those are bad Muslims, all right? Now, good Muslims, or I guess the pearl white Muslims is what you call them. I might be saying it wrong, but forgive me. I'm just explaining it from the way that I remember. And um, they didn't believe in harming children, blowing up churches and different stuff like that. And I guess the bad ones, they did. You know, they, they, they weren't truly, they were for their people, but not truly for their people. They were basically with that. You either get down with this or lay down. You know, they did whatever it was and they harmed children and they harmed, you know, blowed up churches and, you know, different shit like that. And the good Muslims, you know, they don't believe in that shit. But as far as it comes to like how they are, you know, like as far as inside of a dorm and mobbing around the compound, you know, they're the number one people that get, you know, like an actual meeting. You know, they can literally like come together, you know, and, and talk. Well, I believe it's called Ramadan and they they don't allow shit like that with gangs you feel me like they're not gonna let 50 plus bloods all meet up inside the chapel and have a meeting you know or 75 crips you know which I've never seen that many on a compound anyways I've only seen maybe three or four crips at a time on a compound but they're not gonna allow them to do that but the Muslims they had it to where they could do that because they aren't a gang you know but they can't carry themselves like that because they protect their people, which you're supposed to do. You know, I've never seen them get into anything other than, you know, some way where they felt disrespected. You know, someone come inside their cell, walk on their rug or, you know, or just disrespect them inside their cell and shit. And then they get themselves in a situation and then the Muslims come down there to where you would think they are a gang. 
you know, you would think the way that they carry yourself, it's kind of like a gang, you feel me? But they get more, you know, they get more slack than actual gang members would. Now, if something happens to one of theirs, they all rise. And when you see something go down inside of a prison, like say it's at the institution we're at, say the the Zoes and the Cutthroats start colliding. There's a war going down between these two gangs right here at this compound. That isn't guaranteed when you go to your next camp that them same two camps are going to be rocking. I mean, same two gangs are going to be rocking out against each other at that other camp. You feel me? Those are just in-house, you know, wars, in-house beefs. You could go to another camp and they could be cool with each other. Now they're teaming up against someone else. Well, when it comes to Muslims, that shit ain't always in-house, which means if something goes down with a Muslim and it can be a gang or the guards or no matter what it is, it doesn't just affect the institution that that situation occurred at. That shit goes, it's bigger than that. It can go all around the world, on the streets even, major institutions, different states, that shit's real. Like the video I did a long time ago on some other YouTubers uh, channel spoke on it also about the inmate that they killed down here in the state of Florida where they threw him inside of that hot steaming shower and his skin was all on the floor. That dude right there was a Muslim, okay? And Muslims rose after that situation and was actually, you know, involved with going against officers. You feel me? By them doing that to that inmate who was a Muslim, it pissed off Muslims all around in different compounds, different places in the world. You understand? And it's not like that with gangs. You know, like that shit might, it might strike up at another camp or two, but it isn't going to be no full-blown outside war. Unless it's something real, real major. You get what I'm saying? Like severe, severe, you know? But like I said, when a Muslim's disrespected, they're respectful. Every single one I've ever met was cool with me. You know, they, they, they believe in what they believe in and they take their own path. But I've seen one beat the shit out of someone before for disrespecting them in their room. You know? And then the other one slide over there, like I said, make sure their brother's good and, you know, that's what it is. Now... When it comes to the gangs, a lot of people that are gang members, they use, you know, becoming a Muslim as a scape route to getting out of a gang. You feel me? I seen a lot of people while I was incarcerated that were gang members. They've been putting in that work for 15 years, 20 years almost, repping that gang shit, been in stabbing, stabbed people, did everything they needed to do. And there's no way for them to just say, I'm done. I want out. So they'll turn to becoming a Muslim. When they turn to becoming a Muslim, then the gang, if they try to eat them, the Muslims will step in and be like, hey, look, out of respect, you feel me, Papa Bami's one of ours now, you know, and try to talk it out with the gang. I've never seen the gang go against them. I've seen the gangs be like, well, fuck that, then y'all wanna get involved, we'll eat you too, and disrespect the Muslims on some shit like that before, but they never went against the Muslims and just ate them. They did threaten them like that though before, you feel me? And my homeboy, Charlie, he was dedicated, you know? And there was another uh, dude, I forgot his name, so I, I can't really put it out there. But him, he'd come over there every day. He did the salats with, with Charlie every day. They had scars from them doing the salats on their knees. He had the little mark right here on his forehead and all that shit. That's how I learned how to say, a shuttle Allah, alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah, you know? And then I learned when you say, as-salam alaykum, malaykum salam. You know, he, he taught me little things like that. He was trying to give me the game a little bit. And um, while I was at Charlotte CI, there was one white Muslim on the whole compound. I seen two in my whole bid. I seen one when I was at Calhoun in the Panhandle, which I didn't really know he was a Muslim. You feel me? I didn't, I didn't know what the Kufi thing was, or I didn't know that was a religion. You know, I didn't really know anything about them. So I can't really say nothing about that white Muslim that I seen at Calhoun, you feel me? But when I got to Charlotte, learned a little bit about it, then I seen, okay, there's a white boy. Now I knew, okay, that's what the white boy was at the other camp, you know, blah, 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 you feel me? And I guess white people can be in it, like it isn't a gang, it's a religion, you know, but just not that many people have, you see what I'm saying? And I've seen ones that like get involved in like a situation out of disrespect, you know, like, I said, they'll be in their cell. Someone might go in there and disrespect them and walk on their, their rug, the one that they lay down and pray on. 
and or just straight disrespect them, you know, like go in there and go to, you know, pissing in the toilet and that shit splashing or whatever, land on their stuff over there on the ground or whatever it is. And one time there was a dude that, you know, he ended up, he was a Muslim and it had to do with like, I guess he got on someone's cell phone. He paid someone, you know, uh, for 15 minutes, I believe. And when he was on the dude's cell phone or whatever, the officers came around. So they had to hurry up, get off the phone, put the jacket up. Well, he felt like the dude still owed him. He only got like five minutes on the phone. He paid for 15 minutes, you know? So he thought after the officer did his rounds, he was gonna go back in there and get like the rest of his time, the next 10 minutes. Well, that dude whose phone it was ended up bucking the muscle. Was basically like, nah, bro, it's a rap, bro. I ain't bringing it back out today. You know what I'm saying? I'm not bringing it back out today. So you can either, you feel me, come back tomorrow or whatever you're trying to do, but I'm not bringing it back out. But you know, you gotta respect that because he's just being, you know, cautious about his cell phone, you know? But I guess the next day, dude, went, he went there, dude wanted to let him get on the phone. So he kept postponing him, dude went down there a couple times, tried to get on the phone. He kept bucking him, wanted to let him get on the phone. So the Muslim got tired of it, and he ended up running up on the dude or whatever and whooping the dude in that dorm. You know what I'm saying? Beating his ass in that dorm. And then my dorm that had Muslims in it, a bunch of them came there, and I thought they were all just coming together to go to uh, Ramadan and shit like that. But really, they were having a meeting there before they go to Ramadan with the other Muslims and then the gang and then we're like the spewing words like, oh, you got my brother fucked up, da, da, da. Y'all need to stay in y'all's place and this and that. And it was to the point to where a lot of them didn't want to, you know, go to war with the gang. You feel me? A lot of them wasn't like with it at the time. You feel me? They were like on some shit like it, it's a peace thing. You know, give him his money back or, you know, we just, we ain't trying to go that extreme with the gang. But there was also a big chunk that was like, fuck that, they're trying us, we're not allowing that. And then out of that portion of those ones, the majority of the ones that was in my dorm, that little chunk that was having that little meeting before Ramadan was ones that was saying basically they're going to do what they want to do. Even if the Ram when they go to Ramadan, if they say, nah, there is no beef, there is no nothing, you know, this shit's dispute or whatever it is, there's no problems. The ones in my dorm wasn't with that shit. So they ended up going and catching one of the dudes slipping, which was the friend of the dude who owned the phone. And they ended up running up on him, wetting him, and all types of shit broke loose. So then that's when I thought, okay, this gang and the Muslims are going to be bumping heads. And it didn't even go down like that. After they seen them ones was ready to rock, and once those ones did that, those were old school Muslims. Those were dudes that been in prison like 20 years. You know, they was just on some shit like, bitch, we gonna show these young bucks what these old schools are capable of. Let them, th they think shit sweet. They think we can't man up and show them what it's really like. We gonna show them this shit ain't nothing to play with. He must have bucked me on that time on the phone because of my age. He thinks because I'm an old dude that he could just get over on me. See what I'm saying? And... And got the young gang member fucked up. And he was just friends, part of the clique of the dude who owned the phone. It wasn't even the actual dude with the phone, you know? So Muslims, you know, they're they're respected, you feel me? They're, they're, they don't get disrespected like that often, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they do. Not often, though, you feel me? People usually respect them. They're more on like a respect when they conversate with you. So I ain't got nothing bad to say about Muslims, you know? As far as like, if... They eat different, they do. Like my homeboy Charlie, he used to walk up there. He was on that uh, RDP, which is religious diet program. They used to call it CFO. And he used to get sardines and beans and stuff like that rather than regular plates. He didn't get the regular same child hall food as us. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really know like as far as that or when their fasting was or how long they fast for. I don't really know all the answers to that. But I know they did do it while I was in prison. You know, everyone sees... When the Muslims come, they walk around with the kufi on. It's common sense. And it's kind of crazy when you see ones that are known for wearing their kufi all the time. When you see them without it, you know, then that's when you're like, damn. You know, you ever go to Vizzo to visit somebody, a loved one of yours, and you see someone wearing that white kufi. They might have a black one on. You never know. They're Muslims. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in this world that are Muslims. You feel me? Respectful people. Kevin Gates, he, the rapper. Him, he's a Muslim. You know, there's a bunch of them. You see what I'm saying? And me personally, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Muslims. Like I said, you feel me? Every single one I came across were cool. You know, if y'all know any Muslims or if you're a Muslim yourself, feel free to drop it in the comment section. 
Let me know what Muslims are like somewhere else locked up. Here I'm speaking in the state of Florida. You know, if you if you did time somewhere else and the Muslims were different over there, drop it in the comment section. If you know how the fasting goes, you know what I'm saying? Or how long they do the fasting or shit like that or what they're supposed to eat or what they're not allowed to eat, feel free to drop that in here also. You know, I'm I'm with all that shit. I like to learn more things. You see, I'm telling y'all things that I learned just from doing my bid in prison. I had nothing to do with the Muslims while I was in prison and I learned a little bit I know about them. That just shows you can always learn something. You feel me? For real. And I learned that the majority of them are cool people. You know, like I said, I never had a conflict, never had an argument, none of that shit with any Muslim I ever met. They were cool, respected people. They carry themselves different, and if a lot of people were to do their time the way they do their time, there would be less headaches and aggravation and altercations. You know, they they are respected. And then as far as when it comes to the guards, um, I don't think the guards really care though. It, like, I don't think the guards care if it's a Muslim, a blood, a crip, a a zoe, a cutthroat, a Latin king, a nieta, you know, unforgiven. Or a neutron, if you're white, you're black, you're Spanish. I don't think the guards care about none of that shit. Because the guards are the biggest gang inside of prison. You know, those are the ones that get away with every single thing possible. You know, those are the ones that can do what they want to do, when they want, how they want. You know, they can bring dope in if they wanted to and give the dope to somebody. But then catch the person with the dope and charge him for the dope. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy how the world works. You know, but... I've never really seen them disrespect, you know, a Muslim in particular where I can recall. But I know there isn't no favoritism. You see what I'm saying? Unless it's one of them times when the guards did something to an individual who was a Muslim. So it, it struck beef. It made all the Muslims rise on the pound. Then the officers, you know, were trying to like bow down and, you know, so they can like avoid because you don't really know who all the Muslims are. You see, like with gangs, people are docketed. You know, you know, they have it all written down what this dude is, what that dude is, what he reps, what he claims, his tattoo there. You know, his tattoo right there says he's a such and such. Or when he got in trouble at his last camp, he went in a riot. It was the gang between this gang and that gang. You know, so they have a feel of who's who. But when it comes to the Muslims, they don't always know who's a Muslim. So a lot of times the staff will like, instead of feeding into the drama, you know, they'll just dead the drama, most likely, you see? But they ain't doing that shit with no regular inmate. You know, they probably don't give a damn who you is, who you related to, who you met, who you know, all that shit, you feel me? But as far as, like I said, when it comes to Muslims, I can't name a particular situation where they tried him other than that shit that I told y'all about when the dude, they threw him in the shower and burnt him to death. See what I'm saying? But uh, that's all I really gotta say. Like I said, I don't mean no disrespect in this whole video. This whole video that I'm saying about Muslims, I don't mean no disrespect. I'm just telling y'all how they are down here in the state of Florida in prison. How it was through my experience of what I seen, how they carried themselves, what they did, you know, if they was respected, you know, did they get their self in the shit? No, they really didn't. You feel me? They're like their own people. You know, they're their own thing. But don't get it twisted though. Just because someone's a Muslim doesn't mean that you know, they're protected. What I mean by that is, if someone wanted to touch someone or wet someone up, it doesn't matter because that dude's a Muslim, you know, they will still do it. You feel me? Gang members hit gang members up. Gang members rob gang members. I'm pretty sure, you know, Muslims been robbed and hit up plenty of times by different people. You know, probably even their own kind. Probably done bumped heads with their own kind before. You know, but not under my watch. Not while I was there. So I can't speak on that. I can't tell y'all some shit that I know is possible, but I, I didn't witness it or wasn't around and, or don't recall it. You see what I'm saying? But for the most part, while I was locked up, they was respected. You know what I'm saying? And every single one I met was cool. Free my homeboy Charlie doing a life sentence. Hopefully he gets his time back. He's supposed to be giving that time back soon. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video on up. Like I said, y'all drop that shit in the comment section. Let me know how Muslims were where you were locked up. Were they respected? Did they eat different? You know, what does the fasting mean? You get what I'm saying? Like, why do they fast? You know, like, there's certain things that I'd like to learn also. If I spent more time, you know, 
reading into it or spent more time trying to get to know more than I'd know more, you feel me? But this is all I really got for y'all, man. But anyways, I appreciate y'all watching this video. Y'all already know, hit that like button, man, and catch me next time. Keep them squares, rats, clowns, and snakes out your circle. Stay sucker free and never let them knock you off your pivot, man. Till next time, this frog.